my personal view of AI is, and technologies like that, I have a love-hate relationship, I think, because on the one hand, I see, absolutely see where the value out of these types of technologies can be in the future. I think emerging companies will take advantage of that and really put to show some of the things that they're capable of and take down some big players. We will see a bit of bloodshed, I think, in the market in terms of, you know, when you when you look at some monolithic, really large technology organisations, small up-and-comers will be able to leverage that technology, which now is is very available via the cloud platforms, the public cloud platforms. Um, you will see a shift in market. I think these technologies enable new business models. I think they bring in. Uh, with them uh, capability that uh, you cannot uh, look at from a legacy perspective. So th there's something that you can't recreate without using those particular technologies. So I love the fact that we're able to disrupt the, the industry with those types of technologies and we need to be on that journey as well. The hate part is around the ethical side of, of AI and what that brings to the table. You know, a machine making decisions potentially uh, quite impactful decisions on society. I think that's something that we, we need to wrestle with. I think it's something that we need to put a lot of deep thought into. I don't think government legislation is going to solve this issue. I think we as human beings need to be making sure that we're making good choices for humanity in general uh, based on what these technologies can offer in the future. Certainly from my perspective, um, the AI, machine learning and those types of technologies really should be offering the customer uh, the interaction that the customer wants. It should be offering them the, the value that they uh, themselves uh, desire. So when I, what I mean by that is, say you take a family uh, environment where you've got a family at home, mum and dad, two kids, and um, they want to have a meal, they want to order Domino's pizza. That's a very different scenario to a single guy who's at university, who's in his uh, you know, college dorm room or whatever, or, or house share wanting to order a pizza for themselves. So I think these technologies really offer us a way to be able to get to those demographics and really offer them what they want rather than bamboozling them with many different offers and choices that aren't relevant. So I think relevance is, plays a really important part to our future in the way that we offer up technology to our customer. We don't want to confuse them, we want to give them the best possible offer that we can up front um, and save them time. We're really looking at re-engineering and reinventing ourselves in terms of our core platform. So what the aim of that is, is to be able to experiment more and innovate more uh, and faster. So obviously we're well known for our, our, our online platforms and our, our digital technology in that space. However, we feel that we're, we, we need to constantly reinvent because if we don't, uh, you know, we let our competitors um, take advantage of that and then they can come in quite late in the piece, adopt new technologies very quickly and they can spin up uh, uh, services that, that we want to provide also. So if we don't reinvent ourselves, we, we end up in this sort of uh, lull where we, we get too comfortable. So we like to push the barriers a little bit, reinvent ourselves, look at different ways of engaging with customers, and technology enables us to do all of that. We're also looking at technologies around conversational commerce. I mean, that's really important going forward because when you look at the technology landscape of today, uh, conversational commerce is really up and coming. I mean, you know, stats from uh, last Christmas, for example, where uh, Google Home and, and Amazon Alexa and those sort of products are paramount in the, in the Christmas stockings these days for kids. So that's sort of teaching them a new way to engage with technology. And if we're not on that bandwagon, then we're going to lose out pretty big time in the future when you know, the web platforms and the mobile platforms will be less and less engaged with. So I think voice and, and, and that sort of technology is really important to our future. I look at these technologies very similar to how S, uh, SaaS and, and cloud technologies were you know, a decade ago. They were emerging, people were starting to adopt them. Um, some of the business cases weren't really quite there yet. We weren't proving out that they were adding value to the organisation. But as that technology matured and grew and the use cases started to materialise from different organisations, um, it, mainstream adoption came through. Certainly we're experimenting all of the time with these things, but um, in terms of rolling them out mainstream, I think we've got to be very careful that we pick the right opportunity and right time because you can spend an awful lot of time investing in those technologies now when potentially you should be just focusing on your core offering um, and just bringing those through as, as lead-ins to what the future will bring.